So I'm Riola Phelps from uh, Denver, Colorado, a consultant with um, uh, Presidency, and I have done a fair number of projects with them for quite a while. Um, and this one in Ethiopia is one of my favorite ones. This project in Ethiopia is done in partnership with uh, Synergos. Synergos is a 25-year-old organization headquartered in uh, New York City that works on addressing issues of poverty around the globe through collaboration. So that is a very big, um, big part of the work of uh, PI, so you can imagine that it's wonderful to um, partner with Synergos. And um, this is our second project. We did a project in Namibia on maternal health. So we are delighted to um, work with Synergos on these projects. And um, I am joined in this call today by Abera Tola, who is the regional director of Synergos in Ethiopia. And Abera is going to give a little bit of an introduction to himself. And then I'll come back with the agenda. Go ahead, Abera. Uh, thank you, Riola. Uh, uh, yes, I'm uh, Avaratola. I'm working for Synergos, and um, uh, my office is uh, in Addis, and we have uh, quite uh, no. Uh, relatively a big office in, uh, you know, compared to the Synergos programs in other parts of the country. And our main area of engagement here is, you know, with, with agriculture. And um, uh, as you know, agriculture is the main state of the European economy. That's why we are determined to support the European agriculture so that we can, you know, bring change in the life and the livelihoods of the Ethiopian poor farmers. So uh, if I can give you a background of, uh, so I can maybe uh, give you, yeah. Shall I, I'll do the agenda first, okay? Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay, Ariola, please okay. go ahead. Yeah. All right. And I might also say, I want to, um, uh, one of, you may remember, all of our listeners, that um, Otto talked a lot about establishing a core team in order to do some prototyping, and we have a wonderful core team uh, present to work on this, and I, I might ask Belaney, who I think is there supporting Abera, to just stick your head in and let people see you for a minute. She's a wonderful supporter yeah. there. Hi. <laughs> okay, and um, we also have in Ethiopia Wudinesh and Leo who are helping us a lot, and the Presencing team who's been working on this project. It started with Martin Kaluga Banga, and then Wibo and Wibo Kul and Manish have also Manish Rivasatava from India have helped us a lot, and I think Manish is on the call as well, so you can't see him, but he is there. So we're really happy to have such a wonderful core team. And just want to talk a little about the agenda that we put together for this workshop. Um, where, uh, Abera is going to talk a little bit about the background of the project and how it came to be. It's a little bit of a complex project, so we thought you'd all want to know a little bit about that. And then I'm going to talk a bit about the program and what we've actually done. Then Abera will talk a little bit about some of the key results and that should take about 25 minutes. And then we want to spend uh, 30 minutes in question and answers from any of you. And I might say, um, I think there's a little bit of a time delay in this since we have people from all over the world. And so um, why don't you type your questions that come up as we go rather than waiting to start typing them in uh, when we do the question and answer period. And then at the end of the question and answers, we'll have a little bit of um, some final um, closing comments, and, uh, and I want to show a few slides of some of the workshops that we have done. Um, and let me also just uh, just begin. By the way, I just got back from Ethiopia and got a terrible cold coming back, I think, from some of the fatigue, so I hope my voice doesn't sound too bad. 
But I want to speak for just a bit of time about why I think this project is so important, um, both to to Synergos, to PI, and to the world. Um, you know, the I, I'm really passionate about the application of Theory U to helping solve big, big, uh, big problems, big issues uh, in the planet. And um, and I think you know, if you look at at the whole planet, Africa certainly plays a big role in that with so many developing countries. And so the focus being on helping some of these countries really uh, eradicate some of the, of the poverty. And um, Ethiopia is a very critical country in Africa. It's the second most populous country there. Um, it has 81 million people and 31 million uh, farms, smallholder farms. And many of these farms have um, have poor soil and some and there's a fair amount of poverty. So so if you were to set about doing a project to really look at poverty uh, somewhere in the planet, there would be you'd be hard pressed to find a place that is as important as um, as Ethiopia. And um, and one final thing I would like to say to put this in context, I lived in Africa for a couple of years and worked in a lot of programs, a lot of countries there. And I really, as I stayed there, I began to feel how critical it would be to work with the government because the governments in the African countries have such high leverage points for, um, you know, for being able to solve some of these problems. And yet it was very hard to get, uh, to get any kind of, to, to be able to work with governments. So you can imagine when this project in Ethiopia came uh, to be working with the Ministry of Agriculture, the biggest ministry in all of Ethiopia, in the second biggest country in Africa, and we are working directly with the Minister of Agriculture. So I think it's just a project of enormous uh, scope. We've been working there for three years, so I think it's very important, as I said, to Synergos, to PI, and to the world. Okay, Abera, how about you now giving some background on the program? Okay, um, well, thank you, Riola, and uh, good evening for all our viewers. And, uh, you know, the, in 2009, you know, the uh, Melinda Gates was uh, uh, visiting us, and uh, uh, it's, it was so happened that uh, um, I was working for another organization called Oxfam, and we hosted her, her, her visit in Ethiopia, and then uh, as a result of that visit, she was able to visit, to talk to the, the late Prime Minister Malazinawi. And uh, during that visit, he formally uh, applied to her, you know, meaning that, you know, the, 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 the problems, the difficulties he was facing related to uh, enhancing production productivity of the Ethiopian agriculture. You know, the uh, the Ethiopian agriculture is really the backbone of the economy, which, like, for example, uh, you know, it uh, holds more than 80% of uh, our labor force, and that brings more than 40% of our foreign earnings. And uh, the Ethiopian agriculture was, um, you know, the prime minister of Ethiopia formally asked, you know, the, the foundation, particularly Melinda Gates, if the foundation can really help in um, enhancing Ethiopian agricultural production and productivity. And then uh, the foundation accepted that request and hired a consulting firm, the McKenzie, firm, the McKenzie Consult. And then that study came out with like five recommendations or what we call bottlenecks for the Ethiopian agriculture. And like one, some of them are like soil, seed, um, extension, co-ops, and so on. Then, uh, when that study was finalized, as that study was finalized, again, you know, the, the PM asked the foundation really to, you know, to translate this study into action, into practice. And he asked, how can I go about it? You know, then, again, the foundation brought another experience from the uh, from the rest of uh, uh, from the other of its experience, and then uh, in short, came uh, ATA came to life. The Agriculture Transformation Agency was 
created as a result of the support of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So the ATA, the Agriculture Transformation Agency, uh, uh, was mainly is mainly uh, comprising uh, highly you know, educated and uh, 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 staff from from the rest of the world, you know, from Europe, from United States, and other parts of the world, who came here with the purpose of giving a sort of an impetus or energy for the Ministry of Agriculture, building the capacity of Ministry of Agriculture, so that the, the, the Ministry would get energy, would get motivation, would get, you know, all kinds of support and research and development and other things through ATA, and then transform, you know, the agricultural sector. That was the whole idea. So when, you know, this was, as you can imagine, is an, is an effort to make the old system function with the support of the new system, which is ATA, New Breed, and, uh, and an MOA is an, you know, an old organization which was there for the last 60 years. So when, we, when they saw this, you know, it was not this much functioning well. So in, in order to resolve, in order to solve this, and they create some kind of organizational alignment, they approached Synergos, and Synergos came to life to create this kind of synergy between the Ministry of Agriculture and ATA. So we found out that the whole issue around enhancing Ethiopian agriculture was mainly, it's all about people. It's all about people and it's all about systems. So, and that's what we, we did the study. We did again another uh, baseline uh, study about this, and that study demonstrated that the main problem of the Ministry of Agriculture it is about human. It is human capital. People were not motivated. High turnover, you know, um, and, uh, and and infrastructure. These were some of the you know the bottlenecks identified within the Ministry of Agriculture, and. So Synergos came into this to fill this gap through capacity building and of Minister of Agriculture, as well as creating alignment between Ministry of Agriculture and ATA, so that all these efforts from the ATA, the researchers in extension, or in soil studies, or in mapping, and all that would be easily or systematically captured by the by the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry take that research and technology and information forward, you know, for implementation. So uh, this is what was really the, that, that this is way, why we were created and that's what we are really currently doing. So in doing this, Synergos, even though we are working with Ministry of Agriculture, our expertise is mainly in building human capital, in, in, in usually you know, working the systems, making the system function well, you know, helping people understand the roles and the responsibilities better, understand themselves better, and, uh, and then see themselves within the system. So this is, this is our, the area of our expertise, and uh, uh, to do that, it was uh, uh, difficult for us to do it by ourselves, that's where we brought in uh, the Presidencing Institute, you know, resources from the Presidencing Institute, people like Manish, Riola, uh, Weibo, uh, Martin, and, and others to help us. Not only, you know, people in a physical presence, also like the videos which we had you know, last time with, with, with Otto and the other different, you know, different readings, different materials uh, were used really to, you know, to, to support the transformation, transformation process in, uh, in, in Ethiopia. So let me stop here, Riola. All right. Thank you. And I think Abera has turned his camera off in order to keep the um, broadcast flowing smoothly, which unfortunately means that you have to look at my face all the time rather than Abera's, which is a sad thing. But we're glad to have Abera's voice so, so well. So let me talk a little bit about, um, about what we have done, the work that we have actually done. Um, and as Abera said, the project about human capital and developing people. 
And you may be thinking that because this program is about uh, reinventing agriculture, that we would be involved in some of the agricultural innovations. But in fact, that has not been our work. That has been the work of, of ATA to bring in the, the research and those innovations. And then um, we, uh, the, it was felt that the Ministry of Agriculture was, had some inefficiencies, ineffective parts of it, and that our work there was to develop the, the people within the Ministry of Agriculture. So we've been working there for close to three years uh, with that, the core team that I mentioned. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, we began by doing some workshops with a lot of the directors, a lot of the ministers, and all the time teaching some of the, the, the core principles of Theory U. Starting a couple of years ago, we really started to hone in on addressing some of these inefficiencies in the system. And um, I think this is one of the finest examples, our project here, of how we have used the whole of Theory U all five of the different stages uh, in it. And um, so I'm, go I'm going to describe a little what we have done. And primarily lately we've been focusing on two areas. One, well, three areas. First was the lack of alignment between MOA and ATA, a fair amount of discord between those two organizations at the beginning. So we ran workshops to try to harmonize that. And then we began working more directly with the Ministry of Agriculture, working on alignment between the federal government and the, and the regional governments. And this is probably like any other government system in the world where there's a lot of differences of opinion and, and uh, some kinds of conflicts that erupt between the federal and the regional. So we have done those. And recently we have begun working with the cooperative agency um, they are one of the biggest and most important uh, agencies and pieces of the Ag Ministry of Agriculture in order to uh, impact change. And so looking at what, what, is, what are the inefficiencies here. So if you think of the U, think of the sensing part over on the left-hand side of the U. And we have not gone out into the field and done learning journeys here because we have had, we've run these large workshops. And rather, we have brought the information and the knowledge from the field into us. And we have primarily used three different tools for this. One is a wonderful exercise that many of you probably know, the, um, the voices from the field, where you try to bring in voices of different stakeholders throughout the whole organization, and they tell what is happening there. And another uh, activity called the fishbowl dialogue, where through a dialogic process you explore some of the key issues around an area. And finally another thing called a fishbone analysis. You can tell that we like using working with fish. And the fishbone analysis is a root cause analysis of things that are really holding these various parts of the government back from truly achieving their mission. So we have done very good work in that sensing activity on the left hand side of the U. Then if you go down to the bottom of the U, woven throughout all of these workshops, we have had these periods of reflection, of standing back, of kind of turning that camera back in on ourselves, through journaling, through dialogue walks, through dialogic processes like the check-in. So this hasn't been one particular time, but rather woven into all of the workshop. And then I think that something that we've done that's really wonderful has been as you come up the right-hand side of the U around the prototyping. And again, you might think prototyping as being around the innovations for agriculture, but we have looked at these are what kind of prototypes could we do to make these organizations more effective. And so based on the uh, outcomes of the fishbone analysis, the root cause analysis, we have taken a look at what's really holding the organization back. And we have um, we've looked at those, uh, uh, those elements, chosen them, and then done a very great process of putting people on a 100-day process. We, we look at the area. We figure out what needs to be done there. We um, put in an accountable person in charge of it, and then work with them over the 100-day period to actually implement those changes and start to create some of the shifts. 
So both creating the prototyping on this part of the U, but then going all the way up to the top part of the U for actually embedding those changes within the organization. Now, I might say one other thing that we have done throughout all of these workshops is definitely teach the principles of theory U. So that has been woven in throughout and, uh, and we really work with it all of the time. So cornerstones of that have been the levels of listening, the levels of conversing, um, open heart, open mind, open will, how to recognize voices of fear and judgment and cynicism and try to overcome those voices which can often be such barriers to innovation. And we've also added some other elements in here that have not so often been within Theory U, but the ability to balance advocacy and inquiry. It's quite a, quite a culture there of strong advocacy. So based on those levels of listening, we worked at helping people understand how they could become, have more inquiry, and so balancing advocacy, inquiry. And finally, some big work on levels of commitment so that people could, um, could really understand um, and, and move to higher levels of commitment. Abera mentioned that in his opening that some of that lack of motivation coming out of this, some of these big systems was really present there. So I hope you can see how we've taken all of the Theory U principles and then really followed the whole Theory U model as we have done this. And one other thing that I think we've done that has been very successful and something that I think is a, is a real hallmark of doing successful projects like this in September, Manish and I um, went to Audis and we ran a Train the Trainer program for members of the Synergo staff, all of the staff from Audis, but also Synergo staff that came from all around the world and uh, trained them in the principles of Theory U and also how to run these workshops. And I think this has just been a wonderful part uh, because now many of these workshops are being run by the people from Audis and so they are not reliant upon people like Manish Rebo and me flying in from out of town and running workshops. And another key benefit has been that, um, uh, that we, have, um, we can now run a lot of the workshops in Amharic. Obviously if we are doing it we have to run the workshops in English and some of the um, um, that you know, people, although everyone generally understands uh, English, they can't communicate from their heart as well when it's in English and they need to speak in, in Amharic. And so I think this has been a great benefit and one that I think in projects like this you always want to do is to make it so that the people who are local there can actually run, run the programs. So in a nutshell, that's what we've spent the last three years doing. And Abera, how about over to you for a little bit of some of the key results that you have seen, and then we will look at question and answers. Yes, yes. like uh, uh, just to add a few words from what, you know, on what you said, Riola. Uh, yes, you know maybe we, yes we fully use to you for really uh, addressing uh, you know the challenges we are having. Uh, in, in an area of communication or alignment between uh, the government uh, institutions. However, uh, we, we were also adapting this tool, like for example in, uh, in the designing process, we try to adapt to the, to the reality of the, of the issue or, or the problem we are having here. So as a result, I mean the result is quickly, now in, in the, for the last, you know, it's almost three years now, we have very good alignment between the Ministry of Agriculture and ATA. Uh, when I say good alignment, I'm, I'm really talking about the specific results. For example, the research team, the Ethiopian Agriculture Research Team and the ATA Research Team are working together and the, the, the result is that it's not just only working together for the purpose of working together, they have common deliverables and all those deliverables you know, by by both institutions were delivered, and the, the same with extension. You know, the extension team in ETA, in ATA and the extension team in Ministry of Agriculture are very closely working together, and they also have about like, for example, 20 joint deliverables, and all those deliverables were delivered by by, by those institutions. The same with the, like the cooperative agency. 
which was really struggling to stand by its own feet because of uh, you know organizational issues. You know, I can say it was really dysfunctional. But finally, you know, after consecutive consecutive workshops, you know, with with, with us. Finally, it was it is able to stand by its own feet. We just finished this workshop last week, and um, and the, really the staff, well, the staff was really happy, and people were really, you know, uh, enthusiastic really to go forward. And all of them were able to articulate their goals and objectives, for example, and even know their own departmental goals and objectives, which was not the case before. So again, with the federal and the regional, you know, these the two institutions have taken you know responsibilities really to to narrow the gap around roles and the responsibilities. There are some issues around you know uh, constitution areas, around policy areas. There were some gaps there, and they both agreed to even to create a sort of a forum where they can really look into these policy and practice gaps. And the narrow those gaps. So at this time, it is really uh, uh, you know becoming more effective and understood by the by the by the Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Agriculture, Federal Minister of Agriculture is now in well position and working very closely with the regional agricultural bureaus. So <coughs> sorry. So these are these are the results and. Uh, I was just reading the monitoring and evaluation report by the internet by the independent organization, which verifies really uh, uh, what I'm just talking about. So we are happy, very happy with the result, and uh, we are uh, mainly relating our results with the with the with, with how to what extent we are contributing to the. To the cause of the small scale farmer, which means that this alignment, for example, between ATA and, and MOA, you know, in, on extension, for example, created a very innovative idea of approaching extension, you know, at the grassroots level, which was not the case before. You know, in the area of soil, in the area of, for example, coming with the fertilizer blend or soil mapping, all this happened. As a result of really good alignment and the people really working together, so even though I'm not saying it is 100% perfect, but there is you know uh, there are so many measurable results for 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 the, for uh, for what we did you know over the last three years. These are just in short, Riola. All right, yeah. great. Thanks, Sabera. That's been us talking uh, for quite a long period of time, so we'd really like to transition now to answering your questions. So, uh, so please feed those questions in, and a couple of them have come in. Uh, I will take the first one, um, and then I can see a second one here for Avera. But I'll take the first one, and it said, can you explain what you mean about advocacy and inquiry? I would love to do this. I think this um, this part in our uh, skills training has been one of the most powerful things that we have done. If you think back to the four levels of listening and conversing, that level two is characterized a lot by debate and by advocacy, by people advocating about what they think, a lot of monologues. If you remember from what the presentation that Otto did, sort of, I am my jacket, I have my point of view, and I am my point of view. And in order to really get the get work accomplished, you need to shift down more into a more open space where you go into reflection, and particularly reflective inquiry. So rather than making statements, the ability to reflect and ask some questions, and the asking questions really opens, opens the field for dialogue. And as I said, it's my experience that often in, in, um, in governments and in, in, in Africa, there's a strong, uh, a strong culture of advocacy. And you know, it's true all over the world that we've been taught to, um, to advocate our strong positions. It's what most of education is about. And so it's, it's important to shift that into that ability to ask questions. So we do a whole activity 
on this where we help people learn how to ask really good questions and open that and then we do a lot of other dialogue activities like check-in that are all based on this principle of reflective inquiry and I think it's been one of the capacity building things that that has really helped to uh, to shift that field in the Ministry of Agriculture so that would be my answer to that a bear if you want to add on to that but you could also the second question here how is agricultural transformation related with human beings transformation yeah this is uh, yes from um, uh I know from these three years of experience. I mean, I can, I can, I can say that you know, agriculture. We we can transform a system, uh, particularly when we are able to transform themselves. I mean, transform ourselves. I mean, really knowing what we do and why we are doing. You know, the the work we do. You know, uh, for example, you know, in our during our workshops, really we asked many of them. Why they are here? Why they, what, what what why what brought them to the agriculture sector? And you know how they you know what they feel about agriculture. Do they really believe in that? You know, transforming agriculture will transform the nation. So this helped me to understand that uh, uh, really people have to believe in themselves, believe that or transform themselves or look into themselves whether they really love the job they do or not. I mean, that is an that, that is important aspect of this, you know, this workshop, you know. Uh, uh, some are, you know, some are related to culture, some are, some is, some are related to our uh, educational system. For example, when we encountered three of our high officials, uh, how they ended up being you know ministers and the state ministers for agriculture, none of them were really uh, expected or anticipated to end in agriculture. There were many of them; they were thinking of being like scientists or something like a mathematician or engineers. But you know, agriculture was never been in their heart or in their in their mind. So you can imagine how I'm not saying that these people. Will not do good in agriculture, but we believe that we believe that if that thing is really in their heart, they can perform better. So they can transform the data and agriculture. So it is more related. You know, we cannot uh, isolate the system the, from people. So this is what I can I can say. Maybe if you can help me, Riola, on this <laughs> difficult question. Um. Um. I, I think that that um, in Ethiopia, because so much of the country is is focused on agriculture, if you transform agriculture and make it more productive and bring more income to people, you are radically transforming the lives of millions and millions of people. And so that's why I feel such passion about that. All right, here's another really good question. Abera, I'll put this over to you. Could you highlight key challenges? In, uh, in alignment between the stakeholders and this would be I think as I mentioned MOA and ATA and then also the region and the and the federal government probably focus on maybe the region and the federal government and how did the U process help in building some kind of alignment between those two that's a great question over to you Abera uh, the, the, the challenges were uh, so many challenges to the alignment process. One is really the big thing was, as as I just said, it is all about people. I mean, about really loving loving the work we do. Uh, the second part is it's all about livelihoods. For example, what we faced in alignment between uh, ATA and, and MOA staff was. You know, the ATA staff was paid handsomely. They were, they were just like experts. They were getting more money. While, you know, the MOA staff was under the you know, civil service, you know, structure. That was, that was, that was one challenge we had. Uh, the other is, 
you know, the culture issue is also, was also there. For example, you know, the ATA people were coming from the, you know, from diaspora, you know, people from the United States, and these young people, energetic, and, you know, want to see results. And then the MOA people were saying that, look, we know this job, you know, you know, we know, we know, we know everything about agriculture. How, what is that these young people are going to tell us? So the, you know, these were some of the you know, alignment challenges. You know, personal, personal, personality issues were, were also there. I mean, it's cultural issues were also there. So, you know, the salary issue, you know, the educational issue, you know, attitudes, and all those were really, you know, part of the part of the challenge. So, what we did was, as you know, Riola said, we just, you know, we didn't directly face or try to bring a sort of a solution for this, but we had, you know, we, the theory you helped us really to, you know, to, to, to make people uh, articulate these challenges. For example, you know, say what I just said from the MOA side as well as from the ATA side. The ATA guys were, you know, staff was, were saying that, you know, this MOA people are, they don't understand, you know, time frame, they don't understand, you know, they don't care about time, you know, they don't have analytical, you know, skill, you know, uh, they don't respond and they hate us. These were some of the, you know, side from the ATA side. So all this came out as a result of, you know, uh, our facilitation as well as the you know the the tool the the, the theory you tool were, that we are using which is which which uh, what Riola just mentioned you know like in the sensing part you know where we take them through the you know the uh, listening you know through the conversation part when we help them for example even you know uh, helping them in the area of uh, uh, also, uh, like uh, prototyping, I mean, the current reality and the future reality, and this kind of thing really helped us to, to, to find, to, to look into this challenge, then help them really go through that. Again, using, you know, this, uh, using, you know, as a, uh, just the bottom of the U again, you know, to reflect, you know, helping them to have a dialogue, work together, and then, you know, helping them to work together on a table and all that. I mean, it is just the process which helped us really to get into results, which I just talked about. I might add one, one thing on alignment. Um, and I'm from the United States, and this, this will relate to the lack of alignment between the federal and the regional. And I think of how much animosity there is between the federal government and the states in the United States and it just causes so much polarization and lack of, of collaboration and coordination and I think we saw that that was true in Ethiopia and so just the mere act of bringing all of these people together and getting them in a room for four days and then creating all of these processes how did theory you help it gives all of these processes for people sitting down listening to one another hearing what's going on Understanding, you know, a lot of alignment problems are caused by the lack of really understanding and knowing what, what it's all about. And so when people see each other face to face and they understand that, and, and then they can start, um, a lot of the problems are caused by communication problems. And one of the things you have to realize, you know, because most of us sit here in, in first world countries and we have great internet, although even mine seemed to fail this morning, but um, but it's not the case there. It's, uh, people don't have laptop computers on their desks. They don't have fast internet. Um, communication is really, uh, di really difficult. And, um, and these are far distances away. Ethiopia is quite a large country. So that face-to-face -face thing with those incredible tools that are offered through TheoryU, I think, um, is really, really helpful. So I think that was, that was great. Um, all right, here's another question. Um, how many people have been involved in this three-year project? 
And I might might say one thing. Um, th this is not a three-year project. Who knows how many years this project will last? While we were preparing yeah. and waiting, a bear was saying they had a meeting this morning, looking at sort of phases and where to go from here. Because to you know to transform the agriculture in the way that that uh, we're all hoping, it's something that could have taken 50 years in its own pace, and we're trying to do to accomplish maybe in 10 years, 15 years, what could have taken 50 years. So this project can be ongoing. But the last time that I kind of tallied up and did a count, I think that, let's see, first of all, the core team, the presencing Synergos team, is probably about 15 people, those of us who've been really involved in working with it. But I think we have had around 500 people from the Ministry of Agriculture participate in some of these workshops. And by the way, we did a workshop for the actual Minister of Agriculture and his top staff, which was really unheard of. So imagine exposing people like that to the principles of Theory U. Abira, do you want to add anything about numbers on that? Yes, I can add to that. You know, altogether we had more than like uh, more than 30 workshops. And the average uh, people we had was about uh, about 40 people for, for each, you know, workshop. So we 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 believe that we reached up to like um, about uh, like 800 something people. But I can I can give you the right, uh, the right number. But this is the people we really reached out. I mean, this is huge. I mean, the ministry, the federal ministry by itself is about 2,000. 500 employees, and we only we only took you know the directors of each uh, you know pillar department to this alignment workshop and uh, capacity building workshop. The same also for the regions. Great. And Abera, here's a wonderful question for you. This is a really good one. What defines what agricultural transformation yeah. means, and what does it look like on the ground? How do you know when it has happened? What does agricultural transformation mean? What does it look like on the ground? How will we know when it's happened? What a great question. Thanks, whoever sent that one. Yeah, I mean, it is it's a very good question. You know, we, uh, uh, we really, we don't know. I mean, the, the thing I know now is, that, for example, as I, was, as I said, I was reading my monitoring and evaluation report by independent uh, people. And then they they gave me you know uh, concrete uh, data on that. So that means if the farmer uses this blend fertilizer instead of the traditional urea and DAP, and then increases its productivity, that's where we measure our impact. Which I mean is, as a result of collaboration between ATA and MOE, as a result of deliverables. And if this guy, you know, if as a result of alignment they created, they can create this critical mass on the ground, helping the farmer transform his own life, which means that increase in yield as well as increase in the quality of his produce. So this is how, this is how we see that transformation is really happening on the ground. If the farmer uses modern technologies, for example, again, another good example is we, you know, like uh, row planting. Row planting was not a case in Ethiopia before two years. Row plant, you know, we just saw our seed just using our, our hands. So, but now we reduced the amount of seed, and again, we know how, you know, we, we know what kind of where in a, uh, uh, to plant and how to plant. Our, our 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 seed on on the ground. So these are just I'm mentioning some changes in area of information and technology, which has a direct impact on the life and livelihood of our small scale farmer. That's how we measure as as synergos. We say that okay, our effort has shown result. All right, another excellent question. What factors need to be considered in adapting the process? To different contexts? I think this is a great question as well. Uh, and I'll take a crack at answering that, and then, Abera, you can add to it. Um, in my mind, Theory U 
is a process for transformation. It's a process for personal transformation of individuals. But what really is exciting for me is when you use Theory U as a process to create big systems uh, change, big organizational kinds of changes. So it can be used all over the world in, in many, many sorts of contexts. Um, and then, but how do you, when you go to a different context like Ethiopia, how do you make it work? And I think that that's one of the, one of the wonderful facets of a project like this. And I would say for me, for maybe the first six months or so of the process, it's having my own kind of sensing journeys into what, what is going on here, what is really happening in Ethiopia. How can I see and understand the culture well enough so that I know how to speak, how to talk, how to adapt the tools. And so I think all of everything for Theory U can be used many places, many languages all over. And it's up to us as the practitioners to, to do that fine tuning of our ears so that we understand the culture that we are in and what we should emphasize or de-emphasize. A perfect example might be advocacy and inquiry. We haven't used that so much in other places, but it became obvious that that was something that we really should use to adapt to that context. So I'd say high cultural sensitivity on the part of the practitioners. Abera, would you add anything to that? Factors to be considered going into different contexts? Uh, so if I got the question right, I mean, for example, you know, we, we used it for supporting, you know, the um, youth group for, you know, for uh, people working for um, in the IT for, for, for in, in Ethiopia, for the youth group for IT. And what is, what is really uh, interesting was just, you know, understand, you know, the issue and the design, you know, uh, uh, the workshop on the, based on the on the issue or the question uh, that needed to be addressed. So theory you can be for, for agriculture, for youth IT, for, we used it for health, and so it, it is it is it's adaptable. I mean, that's what I, maybe next time we can use it for, you know, for other ministries like Minister of Education and others, so. And I think our time is almost up. We'll, I'll ask, we'll answer one more question here, and then we'll go, in, go into wrapping up. The question is, I said in Ethiopia, working with the government was a strong leverage point. So talk a little bit more about that, and how do you identify stakeholders with a strong enough leverage in the system so that you can really identify them? And I would say uh, why it resonates so much with me in working with the government, from working with NGOs in Africa, I always felt that NGOs, while they were doing great work, were still a little bit on the periphery. And the government, because the governments are so strong in Africa, they are the entity, like the Ministry of Agriculture, they are the entity that can do, can do the most work the, uh, the quickest. And so that's why working with governments is very, very strong for me and the whole thing of multi-sectoral involvement with NGOs and with government. Um, and the final question, how do you identify the stakeholders? I think and there are some tools and processes in theory you at the way up on the left hand side of the you, the co-initiating for how you figure out yeah. who are the key powerful people who need to be engaged in this and who really have a stake in the action. And I would say, boy, in Ethiopia, we're at the heart of that. We could not get to any people who have more, more power and ability to shift the system than where we are. So let me begin, let's begin wrapping up here. And I thought uh, to close, it would be wonderful just to show a few photos of some of our workshops, just so that you can, um, can see these. So if we could have the first photo up, this photo while it's coming, a little delay here, here we go. This is, um, this is at the close of one of our regional workshops. We are on the shore of Lake Tana, which is in the far north of Ethiopia near the town of Barhadar. And Lake Tana, by the way, is the source of the Blue Nile River. 
So that was a beautiful, beautiful site. I, let's see if you can see my pointer. Here is Manish. Over here is Abera. I mentioned Sarita from Synergos. There she is. And there I am buried in the back. So that was a wonderful workshop between the regions and the federal government. Uh, the next photo was, uh, we mentioned working with the cooperatives group in trying to align their group and getting them um, working and honed in on their goals and their achievements and where they're going. This was a great workshop that we ran last May and they liked it so much that we just completed one now for the next 65 people down in the organization so that they were uh, understanding of the goals and could move forward. <coughs> The next workshop and photo, I thought you'd just be interested in seeing this. We did this uh, just last week. This is the workshop with the co-ops. And by that time, the MOOC had happened, and Otto had recorded his wonderful session on listening and conversing. And so I downloaded that, and we were able to bring Otto into the room to speak to us about listening and conversing. So that was, that was great. You can see our large group there. And, and finally, in closing, I wanted to show this very interesting um, uh, thing here. I hope you can see it. At the close of that workshop last week, one of the gentlemen there, the night before the ending, had gone off and written this poem. And it's in Amharic, as you can see. So when he read the poem, of course, I really could not understand what he was saying. But I certainly got the music. I got the sense of it. And he went through <laughs> each part of the whole workshop the levels of listening, the levels of conversing, voices of fear and judgment, open heart, open mind. And he talked about how much that workshop had meant to him. And you know, you could have heard a pin drop in the room. He had probably 80 people in the room as he was reading this poetry. And to me, it just totally symboli symbolized everything that we've been working on, how impactful this was. And there was something about it, him writing this and seeing it in, in Amharic that also showed that progression that we have made. So I thought it was it's a great way to close. And maybe, Abera, just from you a little bit, any sort of final statements that you'd like to make? Yeah, uh, uh, thank you. And uh, but, uh, my final words is uh, that, you know, uh, generally, you know, uh, the context we are working on, like the government, for example, you know the you know our social economic system. Even though Ethiopia is really in a very fast economically economic growth, the government is really the main the main actor to that. I mean because of our past. You know we have very limited private sector, and the civil society sector is very limited. So we are operating under this kind of environment. I'm just mentioning this for our audience really to understand the situation. So beyond that, we are really thrilled by by the success of our work and uh, we, we are really happy working with the present Secret Institute and, uh, and we are happy that you know the theory is really helping us a lot in, uh, in uh, addressing you know, some of our, uh, our challenges and uh, not we, we only us saying that but we our, our stakeholders uh, particularly the, the ministries, the regions and all those who participated in our workshops said that really this is a, you know uh, this is very helpful. So we'll continue for the remaining years with this, and uh, I don't mean that we limit ourselves to this, but we'll also. I know that we are also helping. We are also you know contributing to the you know development of theory U itself. So we believe in that. So it is it is a process and it is a tool. So thank you for for everything. Thank you, Abera. And I would say, in closing, um, I began to go to Ethiopia in 2008, um, and I and I actually fell in love with Ethiopia, and I've fallen in love with the people there, and I also love Theory U. And so, for me, this is really the opportunity of a lifetime to put together all your loves and your passions uh, to work on a project that, to me, just has enormous uh, impact. On, on people uh, in Ethiopia. So thank you so much for all of your participation, wonderful questions, and we will end here. Thanks so much. Bye.